Matthew the 19th chapter verses 16 through 24 And behold one came and said unto him Good master What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life And he said unto him Why callest me good There is none good but the most high But if you will enter into life Keep the commandments And he said unto him which Yahshua said You shall do no murder You shall not commit adultery You shall not steal You shall not bear false witness Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth. What lack I yet? And Yahshua said unto him, If you will be perfect, go and sell that which you have, and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Yahshua unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The eye of the needle mentioned in the book of Matthew was one of several gates that provided passage through the city of Jerusalem's massive walls. The needle gate was used when the city's main gates were closed at night and used for people entering to the city after hours. It was designed for security reasons so that the enemies could not simply ride into the city on their camels and attack. The gate was so small that a man would have to unload his camel of all that it was carrying and then carefully lead his camel through this small gate. It was a slow and quite difficult task. You can see that it would be difficult for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, but not impossible. And so what I want to pay attention to is that when the rich ruler asked Yahshua what good things must he do to enter into life or to receive the kingdom, Yahshua named the commandments. But when the rich young ruler said, hey, I've been doing this since my youth, Yahshua said, if you want to be perfect, and that's the key to this right here, it's about him being perfect, or in other words, becoming a son of God. Pay attention to the illustration to your left with the camel entering into the needle's eye without carrying any luggage. Now here's wisdom. The true meaning is in order to enter the kingdom, you must humble yourself and learn to detach from your material things. In order for that camel to get in through the eye of the needle, it would have to first get down on its knees and it would have to crawl on its belly into that eye. This is symbolic to being humble. And even with that, it would still be a tight fit. So the camel had to be sure to unload any baggage or any material things that it, car that it was carrying along with it. Psalms 82 verses 1 through 6 The Most High stand in a congregation of the mighty and judge amongst the gods, which are the sons of God. How long will you pervert justice and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy from the hands of the wicked. And in verse 6, it points out that the Most High is addressing this to the children of the Most High or the gods. The Most High gave all of his creation into the hands of the sons of God, and it is their job as the gods of this earth to look out for and take care of all of the Most High's creations. Turning water into wine. John, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. In the third day, there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Yahshua was there. And both Yahshua was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahshua said unto him, They have no wine. Yahshua said unto her, Woman, what I have to do with you? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Remember that. Containing two or three firkins apiece. Yahshua said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doeth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, that which is worse. But you have kept the good wine until now. Here's wisdom. Yahshua took the carnal or the physical word and made it spiritual. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 25 through 26 read, 
Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he may sanctify it and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word, not having spot or wrinkle, but holy without blemish. So according to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the washing of water was a metaphor for the word of the Most High, which Yahshua came and gave the spiritual understanding, or in other words, turned water into wine. Now in the second chapter of John, in the sixth verse, it stated that the stone vessels of water was after the purifying of the Jews, or in other words, after the law of the Levites, which John the Baptist was. This is what he meant in Matthew, the third chapter, 11th verse, when he said, I baptize or purify with water, which is the Levitical law, but Yahshua will come and baptize with fire in the Holy Ghost, which is spirit.